Uh, is this a problem? Uh, maybe. Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking through some kitchen appliances for you guys. And to be honest, I'm kind of embarrassed to say that this is not even all of the kitchen appliances that I own. Some of them wouldn't fit on this counter. There's one more back there, actually. I think I have more under the sink too. But anyways, the point is, a lot of you guys ask me what kitchen appliances I use or what appliances I would recommend. And honestly, I do use all of my kitchen appliances and I think there are pros and cons to a lot of them. Um, and some of them are more expensive than others and some of us don't have the counter space for all of them and sometimes you're just in the market and you want a new appliance. So I'm just going to go through all my kitchen appliances and tell you which ones I actually use the most, what I use them for, and if I would recommend them. Um, these are not going to be thorough reviews of each of the products. If you want a full in-depth review of a Vitamix or a juicer or an air fryer or whatever, you can easily look online and find a blog post that's going to take you through all of the specs or whatever. This is just going to be much more casual review and how I actually physically use the products themselves. Also, as a disclaimer, I am a food blogger and I have bought some of these products with my own money. Um, some of them were actually gifted to me from family members and some of them were sent to me as product samples or for a collaboration. So while I have not paid for all of these products with my own money, I am going to be honest in my reviews of them and I am going to give you the pros and cons of each. So let's start out with the most common kitchen essential or the one that I recommend the most, the blender. And you know, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. It's kind of annoying me right now. I do have a Vitamix. Um, if you're unfamiliar, which you probably know what a Vitamix is, it's just a really, really nice, powerful blender. They use these in restaurants. Uh, Vitamix and Blendtec are the two biggest brand names for high-end blenders. And this is a high-end blender. I have one of the nicest Vitamixes available. I think it's the Ascent series. This runs at around like $600. And that is a lot for a blender. And honestly, guys, this was gifted to me and I'm very grateful that it was gifted to me because I kind of struggled with the thought of even spending $300 for a low level Vitamix for a very long time. But I will say it is amazing and it is life changing. And I do really like this um, series of Vitamix. It's the newer series versus their older series, but this one has different programs in it for like smoothies and making soups and cleaning it. And the power really is unparalleled to any other blender that I've had. And I have used a wide variety of other blenders. You can make pretty much anything. Like I put, made a smoothie and I just put a whole leaf of kale in there and stem included in everything. And it was smooth. You could not even tell there was kale on the smoothie. So you can make your own nut milks, you can make nut butters. Cons are the price. And I will say with this blender itself, I have the larger blender for this. The base itself is really wide versus some of the older Vitamixes. Um, so if I wanna make a small quantity of a sauce or like a small amount of cashew cream, the base for this is actually too wide and I usually have to double the recipe. That being said, they sell a smaller base for this that doesn't have that problem. And they also sell sauce containers and disc containers um, for like really small quantities of things that you can still use on this base. And it's just as powerful. So if you are looking to buy Vitamix, I would just keep that in mind. And if you wanna make smaller quantities of sauce, I would buy a smaller lid to start out. I still use this for smoothies and I'm really glad I have this and like for pureeing soups and stuff because I don't have an immersion blender. Um, but I do have buying a smaller, uh, whatever this thing is called, cup holder on my to-do list. Having a really expensive blender is nice, though I'm gonna say it's not essential. Like if you're not going to make your own cashew cream all the time and your smoothies are pretty basic and you're okay with chewing a little bit of kale, you don't need a $600 blender, though I will say it's nice. So what I wanna show you guys is what I was using beforehand that I really like, and it has been much rusty little thing for eons and this is the ninja duo so it's not even a full-size blender it's actually a bullet blender that pops into this base and then it's a mini food processor and i think this runs at around a hundred dollars which i know is still not affordable for some people but i think for a blender and food processor combination this is one of the best bangs for your buck that you can get I use this in so many of my videos. If you go through my old YouTube videos, you can see. Um, and I really like it. You can make a cashew cream in here. You may have to add a little bit extra water and it's not going to be as smooth, but this blender does the trick. 
And if I need to make a cashew cream right now, I still make it in this versus this blender just because the base is too wide. Um, but this does, I will admit, make it a little bit smoother. And this food processor works great. So if you're using a large quantity of things, obviously you need a larger food processor. But I actually still use this food processor over my other food processor that I'm gonna show you next. Um, when I need something small because it works, it does a trick. I like that it actually has double blades and it's really easy to take out and clean. Also, I've made my own nut butters in this food processor and they come out just as smooth and creamy as they would in a Vitamix. So if you're okay without having a big blender for larger quantities of things and you're not looking to spend that large amount of money, I would honestly really recommend this. I guess con-wise, it's not as big. It's not as powerful, so it won't be as smooth. And it is really noisy though. So when I use this, I usually plug my ears because I feel like I'm going prematurely deaf, um, whereas the Vitamix is a lot more quiet. My food processor, I really don't use this very often because I have that mini one, and I would recommend that, but I do use this for larger quantities, things like salsa or when I make a big batch of hummus. This is an ancient Cuisinart that my grandma gave to me because she wasn't using it anymore. And guys, this thing has been through the ringer. This thing survived my vegan phase in college when I ate banana ice cream every day. And it made banana ice cream out of frozen bananas for a solid two, at least a year and a half daily. And I didn't even let the bananas fall for very long. And it still works perfectly fine. The blades are still sharp. Uh, it's great for veggie burgers and stuff. In general, I like food processors because they can chop large amount of vegetables and does have all the attachment to great veggies and stuff, which is much faster than using a handheld grater. So I would recommend it, though I can't recommend this model because I mean, I think at one point this used to be like the color of the cabinets. Um, but this one is very sturdy and I know my roommates have a Cuisinart newer model and it works well as well. So if you are looking to invest like and you're going full gung ho, I would recommend a full size blender and a full size food processor, but I think that the little mini one is a good in between as well. So honestly, those are all of the, what I would consider to be kitchen essentials in terms of appliances. Everything else in my eyes is a bonus and you don't need it to live a healthy lifestyle and you don't need it in your kitchen, though there are definitely pros of the rest of these appliances and I do really enjoy using them. So the first one I think is the most common is the Instant Pot. I bought this with my own money when I was in college, so this is a much older model. So I didn't clean any of my appliances, guys. This is real life, so if you're gonna leave a comment telling me my stuff looks dirty, it is. Um, but, so this is the Instant Pot. I do recipes with this occasionally. Honestly, I mostly use this to make a large batch of dried beans and cook my dried beans from scratch and make hummus or soups or a large amount of grains because it does cook in a fraction of the time and it is really convenient. If you're unfamiliar with an Instant Pot, it's an electronic pressure cooker. Um, so the pressure gets really high in here and you don't need as much liquid, not as much liquid escapes. And you can cook dried beans in like 30 minutes versus on the stove top where it could take like two to three hours if you didn't soak them beforehand. Pros, I really like it. It's fast and convenient. And even though I only use it to make beans and I don't experiment too, too much with like pastas or other more extravagant things, I would purchase this again in a heartbeat if it like randomly broke just because it is really reliable with beans. And it also um, works as a slow cooker. So it has different functions in it, like a saute function. I can't see, but saute function and a slow cook function those are the ones that I would use the most so if you are making a soup or something you can saute your veggies in the pot itself before you seal it and add the pressure and you don't really need to buy a slow cooker because this does the exact same thing cons I guess are the price but I would say you can typically find this on sale at a, at a good price especially if you're looking at the right time of year and the only other con I would say is that it does cook things in a fraction of the time, but it does take time to come to pressure and heat up. And like I said, this is an older model, four or five years old. And I've noticed that as it has gotten older, it does take um, a longer amount of time to come to pressure. And that could be the model. It could be because my seal isn't as good as it needs to be. Um, but I just wanna put that out there and be honest. My next appliance is the Handy Dandy Air Fryer. Um, I've had this for a little over a year and a half or two years, and I honestly really like this. I think this is 
great if you are cooking for one person and you want an easy quick meal. The way an air fryer works, it's kind of like a convection oven. So it is a fan through it and it delivers heat, it's electronic as well. And the way the fan pumps through the machine, it allows the food to crisp on all sides. Whereas when you cook it in an oven, the heat is only coming from the top and the bottom. So like the bottom side that's on the baking sheet will typically cook a little better than the top. But with this, it gets all around crispy on all sides. The interface may be a little bit different, but you're going to set your temperature, you're gonna set your time, and you have an air fryer basket that pops out. And then there's a base that like catches anything that falls out of the actual basket itself. Pros, it crisps food really well. I love crisping tofu in here. It only takes 10 minutes in the air fryer and I just literally chop it up, throw it in. The basket is non-stick, so you don't have to use oil, um, but you can use less oil if you typically do cook with oil as well and it's going to get just as crispy, if not more crispy, than it would as frying something. That's essentially why it's called an air fryer. It definitely crisps food up a lot faster than it would in a standard oven. So I would say that's a pro as well. You can make french fries in here and any other packaged food like veggie burgers or meatballs or stuff that you would normally cook in the oven that you would want to get a little bit crispier. The air fryer does a great job at doing that. And I also actually really like it for reheating food. I think it's a lot faster than the toaster oven. Cons, I would say the basket size, like if you're cooking for one person, that's good. But the more you fill the basket, the longer it does take to cook things. And you do need to pull it out and shake the contents in the basket every once in a while. It's also kind of bulky. So I luckily have enough cabinet space where I don't keep this on my countertop so I can keep it down below. But I do really like this and if you like crispy food or you want like easy, fast, crispy tofu or you reheat your leftovers and you're not a fan of using the microwave because the microwave does make things chewy also, I think that this is a good investment. I have one by Avalon Bay. I'm going to link all my appliances down below but I do really like this company as well as this air fryer specifically. It's a touch screen for adjusting your temperature and time and stuff which I really like and I've never had a problem with it malfunction and the basket itself in here, like wiggling it side to side, is really secure, but it still pops out really easily where I know other air fryers have issues where this basket itself doesn't seal as well um, and it can get pretty wobbly. Now I'm gonna talk to you guys about the Ninja Foodie. I just recently worked with Ninja on this as a disclosure uh, to promote this product a few months ago and if I was looking to buy an air fryer or an Instant Pot, Honestly, I would just buy this instead because it does both. It is both a pressure cooker and an air fryer. And um, I've worked with this machine. I've tested a lot with different recipes when I worked with them. And I think it is very intelligently designed. The one thing I, well, one of the things I don't like about it is that this lid doesn't come completely off, but it's not really a deal breaker. And then this is the pressure cooker lid. So when you are pressure cooking something, you would put this lid on and this lid just kind of hangs out. Um, but then when you're air frying something, use this lid which has a top coil in it and it has a ton of settings as well it also functions as a steamer and a slow cooker and you can saute things in the pan itself just like the instant pot and the other thing that i like about this is that it does come with a non-stick um, pot just like the instant pot actually i think this is more non-stick than the instant pot which is nice so you have less burn on the bottom of the pot and it's easier to clean up but it also comes with a lot of fun apparatuses i actually don't have them all with me but it has this uh, basket, which I wanted to show you guys, which would be kind of like the air fryer basket. And I actually like this um, almost more than the air fryer basket because when you're shaking the air fryer basket, sometimes it can get difficult to shake everything, but this is really easy to pop out and just shake or stir everything around because it has handles, obviously you'd wear gloves. I would recommend this because I think it's a great combination of the two appliances and you get more bang for your buck. Um, the cons, it is a little bit of a higher price point. I don't want to like that this lid doesn't come off all the way like I already said. And it is really bulky and really heavy. So if you're tight for space, obviously the Instant Pot is a little smaller. But I think still this combined is still smaller than the Instant Pot and the air fryer. And then the last item I just wanted to talk about, I do not think is essential in any way, shape, or form is a juicer but i do make juice and i put it in my videos and on my instagram stories and you guys ask me what juicer i have so i just wanted to briefly mention it i have a huron slow masticating juicer 
I do really like this juicer because it's nice and compact. So some juicers are longer and they take up more counter space. Whereas this, it's like nice and vertical and it comes with a lot of different appliances. So itself, it's honestly, I think it's really easy to assemble and clean. So this is a slow masticating juicer, which means it uses less heat when it is juicing the vegetables, which is good because it preserves all of the nutrients and vitamins a lot more. And typically when you make juice, you should consume it as fast as possible. Um, but this is a slow masticating juicer, so if you keep it in the fridge for one to two days, it's actually a lot better than with a cheaper juicer. So it is a little bit more expensive, but if you are looking to buy a juicer, I think it's worth it to pay a higher price to actually get something that's going to preserve all of the health benefits of your juice. Another cool thing that I thought was snazzy that it comes with is actually an orange juice maker. So you like pop this on and then this uh, spins so you can make fresh pressed orange juice if you want. So that is it for all the appliances. Obviously I have a ton of appliances and you do not need all these appliances to live a healthy, happy life. And I never wanna set out a standard that you need to own like 5,000 different appliances in order to be a good chef. Honestly, I don't think you need any appliances in order to be a good chef. But I just wanted to give you guys a breakdown of all of these and how and why I actually use them and how often I use them. Oh, I forgot to mention, but I use my juicer about like once a week nowadays. The air fryer, I'd say I use like three times a week. The Instant Pot, I probably only use like once or twice a week, but um, I make a big batch of things, so it lasts me for the week. And yeah, the blender and stuff I use like almost every day if I'm recipe testing, but at least like three or four times a week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I also did a video on basic kitchen supplies and tools that I think are essential to your kitchen that aren't any crazy woo-woo gadgets and stuff. So if you're interested in that too, I will link that down below as well. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below telling me your favorite kitchen appliance. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you can click that little button right down there. I post two new videos every single week. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, whatever time of day it is for you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.